Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're here uh, running a little late today on Cuban time, and that's because we have an amazing guest. He's such a good Cuban actor from our community, doing some really great work uh, in Hollywood, in LA, in Atlanta, working on the brand new Ty uh, 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 Tyler Perry series that's become very popular, The Have and Have Nots. It's my good friend, Oscar Torrey, who's here. Uh, he is, again, such an amazing talent. You've also seen him in The Hangover 3. You have seen him in Ladron Que Roba Ladron and a ton of other great works, but we're so proud of this this 305 talent that's doing some amazing things in, in, in Hollywood, particularly with the Tyler Perry show. We're gonna show a clip of his work on that in one minute, but before we do that, we always talk a little bit about what the show is. This is the weekly MMFM Digital. I'm your host, JL Martinez. We are brought to you each and every week by the Miami Media and Film Market and Camacol, the Latin Chamber of Commerce. As always, a shout out to my partner, Patty Arias, the executive producer and chief executive of the organization. So, a little bit of industry news. In Variety reporting that HBO Max has lost subscriptions once again, even though they dropped the price. Meanwhile, their development executives are working on a new romantic comedy, How to Lose a Subscriber in 10 Days. They gotta bring Game of Thrones back. That's the only way, guys. Well, enough talk about God. I wanna get to my good friend, Oscar. Here is a clip of his latest work on Tyler Perry's hit show, The Have and Have Nots. You got my mother in there? Who was your mother? Rose Malone. Yes. For what? Well, I, uh, I, um... Is he stuttering? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh... How the hell did this happen? Well, she was... Who the hell was the officer that arrested my mother? Look, I don't know who the hell you think you are, but we're the Malones, okay? Who was it? Who arrested my mother? I arrested her. You? Yes. Are you new? No. No, 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 you must be. Officer uh, She Morris. was driving under the influence, so she's in jail. You can pick her up tomorrow morning when the court's open. Who the hell is this guy? I don't know. I'm gonna ask you to leave. I said... You said, you said what? What did you say? Wait, 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 wait. calm down, calm down. This clown... No, no. Well, listen, listen, I'll listen, 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 wait! I don't think you understand. Can you all please leave? Say what? You heard me. Yeah, yeah, but I don't think you heard me. I said... And I said, get my mother out of there! Get out of here right now. I said... You said... You said what? You said what? Listen, if you don't get out of here right now, I'm gonna have you all arrested. Is that so? Yes. Okay. 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 Officer, uh, who did you say you were again? As I said, my name is Officer Morris. And Remind me never to mess with your family, Oscar. <laughs> but my mom. <laughs> Absolutely. 100%. Oye, congratulations, Oscar. Welcome to the show. Thank Thanks you. so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me as your guest. I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of your show. You know, I, <laughs> I comment on, the, on your guests. Yeah. So it's an honor to be here. Yeah, I figured, man, now we got to have you in the spotlight. So, but yeah, you know, I've been, I've been thinking about bringing you on for a while, so I'm, I'm glad we finally were able to work it out. Uh, but uh, yeah, you know, I just want to dive right into it. You know, a lot of our um, viewers are from the industry. A lot of them are actors. They're trying to get to where you are now. Uh, so we want to just kind of use your life journey as sort of um, uh, a way to kind of let the younger folks know, you know, sort of what it is, what it takes to be a working actor. So let's start with you. Where, where, you're from originally from Miami, correct? Or from Cuba? Uh, I don't know. I was born and raised in Miami of Cuban parents. You know, I was born and raised in Miami. Uh, and then I came, I came to LA uh, 20 something years ago. I moved to LA. I started acting in Miami. I had some success in Miami. And then I decided to, uh, to move to LA because obviously the type of the type of shows that I wanted to be on and stuff uh, are here in LA, and there was nothing going on in Miami when I moved when I moved to LA. 
Right, right. So in terms of your, your training in Miami, you know, uh, at what age did you first decide that this is something you wanted to pursue? And then how did you first start to, I guess, gain the tools to pursue a career in acting? I started acting in college. Um, I started taking an acting class in college by by chance. It wasn't something that I had planned. It wasn't something that I wanted to do. I uh, I needed one more elective um, to finish Miami Dade Community College. And a uh, girlfriend, I asked her to sign me up for a class, and she took it upon herself to sign me up for an acting class because she thought it'd be funny to put <laughs> me in an acting class because I was really shy. So oh wow and um, so a joke was on her. There you but go. She still reminds me. She still reminds me that thanks to her, you know, I'm an actor now. There you go. So when you win but, that Oscar, I, you got to say that girl that got me into acting class at Miami Dade. Well, <laughs> well that girl was my first wife. Oh, that girl wow. My first wife. Yeah. Wow. But first wife. <laughs> yeah, too sorry. So, okay. So, so let's go for it. Let's go for it. Yeah, absolutely. Sounds like it. But that's, you know, that's great. So then now you have sort of this toolkit. You're a shy guy. Wasn't really thinking about pursuing acting. What happened in, during the course of that class that made you change your mind and make you sort of come out of your shell and, and really almost do a 360, right? It's completely, completely changed of where I was heading. I was, um, I was studying psychology. Hmm. That's what I thought I was going to be. Um, in fact, I had work. I worked as a therapist. Believe it or not, for seven years, I worked as a therapist when I first started acting. Um, so I did, I did, you know, I was doing acting on the side. I, I hadn't like committed full, full time to it. But oh, it was in an, it was in that acting class. It was in that acting class. The last day of the, that acting class, that the teacher told me I had to go up and do something, or else she was going to fail me. Because I sat in that class, man, I wasn't going to go. I looked at these these people who wanted to be actors and in the class and you know i'm like they're crazy they're right all these imaginary exercises and <laughs> sense memory and all that and i'm like no you're right. not sensing anything out of me <laughs> but, I had to, but i had to go up so then i did she the exercise was something bring something of your personal life a personal moment to the stage and i chose and the only thing i can think of was when my grandmother was dying, I said goodbye to her, and she passed away that day. Oh, wow. I went up on stage. I had planned everything I was going to do because I remember what the, the way it had happened. And once I stood on that stage, something clicked, and I forgot I was on stage. I forgot it was a class. I forgot there were people watching me, and I saw my grandmother in front of me. I totally saw her in front of me, and I just started crying, which – it didn't happen when I said goodbye to her, funny enough. I didn't break down that way. And I just held on. To, I just held on to, to my imaginary grandmother. I held on to her. And that was the moment I caught the bug. It took me a while to, to like accept it, that this is something I want to pursue. Because, you know, that's not something most people say that they want to pursue and decide in college that this is something they're going to pursue. You know, a lot of people that I talked to have, have had this dream from early on and whatever, that wasn't me. I saw Hollywood as, you know, Mars or something. <laughs> right, right. right. Not yeah. in Miami. No. So that's how I first started. And then that acting teacher, Teresa Maria Rojas, which is a well-known acting teacher in Miami, invited me to a, a night class she had, and there were more seasoned actors there. And, again, I sat in that class and I watched people go up on stage, and I didn't go, but I was learning. Just from sitting in the class, I was learning what they were doing. And I, I knew, I'm like, I can do that. I don't know how to do it, but I know I can, that's in me. Right. And I worked hard and I watched I watched every movie that I could get my hands on. It didn't matter where it was from. I looked at all the actors who everybody said they're great actors or that I enjoyed watching. And I'm like, why are they good? You know, I studied their performances. Why are they natural? You know, Marlon Brando was one that really stood out to me because he seemed very natural. Why is he not, why is he living? And, and I, re I realized early on that it was behavior. Right. And was, we were watching him on screen as if we weren't watching him. He was behaving as if we weren't watching. I'm like, okay, you know, that that's one of the keys. Right. And then at some point, you know, it was rough at the beginning for me to, for everything to click. Hmm. But then I found I kind of found a way of working 
And I think every actor goes through that. You find what works for you. Sure. And and what works for me was that seeing the world through the character's eyes. I go, okay, it's not Oscar, although I'm bringing elements of Oscar, of course. But I'm like, how does this character see the world? And once I could, once I could like get into that body, I w I didn't feel like I was acting. I was no longer self conscious, which was the my first. The first challenge that I had to overcome, and most actors have to overcome, it's being self-conscious. Absolutely, yeah. And it's, it's funny because just in this first few minutes, you've gone over a lot of, you know, really powerful acting techniques from sort of the sense memory with your grandmother and seeing your the eyes through the character and, you know, just kind of forgetting you're on stage, like, you know, losing the self-consciousness, like you said. You know, those are really some of, uh, you know, in, in a lot of really professional acting courses, a lot of the things that they teach you. And so you really were able to add those essential things to your, I guess, the actor's toolkit, mm -hmm. right? And just kind of use that to kind of propel your journey into the acting world. So sort of trans transitioning from the educational part to the professional, what was what was your sort of first gig, your first kind of entree into professional show business as an actor? My first gig was a Spanish soap opera in Miami called Maria Elena. Mm. And, um, and the way I got the job was the way I got the job dictated how, how I how I behaved the rest of my career in a way was I made this made up resume, which you can't do now because everybody goes to IMDb and they'll check right. it out. It was, it, was a, it was a made up resume. And um, and I looked up, the soap was already on TV. And I looked up who the casting director was. And I showed up with my made up resume and some photos that I had taken. That were <laughs> I look at them now, they were cheesy as hell. That's funny. But I thought they were great back then. Black and white. And I showed up to the studio. I just walked in. Wow. I just walked in and I said, uh, yeah, I'm here uh, looking for the casting director. The security guard stopped me right away. Um, mm. And surprisingly, he didn't kick me out. He oh. goes, oh, okay, the office is this way. He took me. So oh, I wow. walked right by the sets and all that. I saw the actors walking by. It was the first time. It was my first time ever on a set. Mm. So I, I went to the casting director's office. He wasn't there. He was away for two weeks. But they took my information. They go, we'll call you. And I go, okay, I did my part. I don't know if right. they're going to call me, but I did my part. I got a call like a week later for an audition. I went in, and I was probably all over the place. Honestly, I was nervous. I, I was over the top. I was like, you know, I went. I, I broke his phone. He gave, me a, he gave me a phone as a prop, and I pulled it off. The, off the, I didn't back then when it wasn't cell phones. Yeah. I pulled it off the wall, and I, I, re, I didn't realize it was connected to the wall. Oh, no. It went horribly wrong, but I booked the role. Wow. So that was my first professional job, and I ended up doing like something like 11 to 15 episodes wow. of Maria Elena. I was horrible. I was horrible. I looked at it. I would look at it on TV, and I'm like, I would cringe hmm. at my performance. So right. that was another key that I, I saw myself, and I knew I wasn't good, but I knew I could be better. But that's right. important, you know, not not to say, okay, not to lie to yourself. I was looking at it, I'm like, mm, that's not good. What, why am I not good? Why does it feel like I'm acting or acting too much? And I was self-conscious, you know, it hadn't clicked in yet, everything that I talked about. Um, but it gave me a feeling that, listen, I can do this. And if I book the job and I'm bad, I was naive. Naive goes a long way. Being naive goes a long way. At the beginning. I tell actors, ride that. As long as you can, but keep right. working on your craft. And people, family members would tell me, oh, yeah, yeah you know, uh, you were good, but I think you should uh, you should listen to the other actor more. You know, it seemed like you weren't listening or you were, everybody was giving me acting tips from my family. That's interesting. Yeah. That's, uh... Everybody's an actor, you know, especially <laughs> if you're Cuban, they're all actors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all giving you notes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mejito. So that was my. See, tu sabes lo que tú tienes que hacer es tienes que ser más natural. You gotta be more natural. Mira los ojos, los ojos. Hace la conexión, conexión. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, that's great. That, so that was my beginning. Wow. I mean, that's that's great. I mean, the fact that you know, and and it's funny because there's so many amazing stories, but it's just so interesting that you kind of faked this resume, walked into the studio without knowing anybody, walked into the you know, just kind of like pretended like you knew where you're going. 
you know, like you said, in your eyes, it was a terrible audition. Maybe they saw it as method acting, pulling phones out of the wall. Either way, you get the gig, right? So you've, bro you've literally broken in by breaking the phone. <laughs> and now yeah. you're a professional <laughs> actor. <laughs> yeah. That's great. And so, so do you kind of stay working in that telenovela world for a while? Or did you kind of feel like eventually you wanted to cross over into the general market? I knew I wanted to cross over to the general market. I knew that wasn't, especially at that point in my career and my life, it wasn't somewhere where I could thrive. Right. It wasn't, you know, I, I sounded Cuban, which I still do. I didn't have that neutral Spanish accent that they asked for. Um, right. They use apuntadores a lot, which is an earpiece that they feed you the lines when you're doing, a, when you're working on. It wasn't, I'm like, I wasn't, I didn't enjoy it. Right. Uh, I didn't enjoy, I didn't really enjoy and um, you know and the reason why I wanted to be an actor was because I grew up not necessarily watching telenovelas nothing wrong with telenovelas they're, they're great um, and I did see them because my they were, they were always if you come from a Spanish family they're always on you know right. they're always on right. but the, the 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 movie the things that I admire were movies it was mostly movies at that time, you know, that was where the best writing was and best characters and all this. And that's right. what I, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted so, to be in movies. So what did you do? Did you just literally pack up and move to LA? Did you try to get an agent out there? What was that transition like for you? No, no, no. I was still in Miami. Um, I was still in Miami. There was a, the, in the, in the world was starting to, in Miami, was starting to happen. It was right. Around the time of uh, Quentin Tarantino and Robert Rodriguez, you know all that that everybody wanted to be filmmakers and they had a camera. They, and I was right. lucky enough. I I, I booked a, a movie with Philip Michael Thomas hmm. from Miami Vice. Yeah, he played his partner. And how I booked that movie was very similar how I booked a soap opera. Okay, I had booked a, a, a commercial in Miami, a Pizza Hut com Pizza Hut commercial. And I was trying on wardrobe at the Pizza Hut commercial. I was just basically in the background. I wasn't even. I didn't have any lines. Yeah. Um, but I was in stu. I was in the studio, and I overheard a director talking to some guy in a lobby about no because I am a pre-production for a movie. Blah, blah, blah. And I was walking by, and I heard it. I'm like, "This is my chance." So I yeah. walked up to the guy, and I go. Hey, uh, hi, sorry to interrupt your conversation, but I was walking by and I heard you that you're a pre-production for a movie. I'm an actor. Um, I just worked in a soap opera. I have, a I have a demo reel, which my demo reel was only a soap, nothing else. Right, right, and right. A, scene that I, a scene that I had done, and a friend of mine recorded a scene that I had done in his house just to add something to my demo. Um, so I said, can I give you my demo reel and photo, re and photo resume? And he's like, he was totally thrown off because I came in really strong. He goes, uh, okay. So I handed it to him, and then I said, "Can I have your telephone number?" Wow. So I can, I can, so I, you know, I can call call you, and you know, I want I want to be able to audition. Yeah, right. So, the guy was totally thrown off, and he goes, "No, no. How about if I get your number and I call?" It, which <laughs> makes sense. That's that's what I would do. I right. go, yeah. The problem with that is that I'm moving, oh, and wow. I'm gonna be changing numbers. So I'd rather have your number so I can call you because I, I I knew. He's not going to call. Smart. So I can call you, you know, because I'm afraid that, you know, we're not going to be able to communicate. I put him on the spot, and the guy was nice enough to give me his number. And I called wow. him. Literally, I called him every – I wrote it down when I called him, and I would call him every month for six okay. months. Oh, wow. Okay. And at the six-month period, he said, I called him, and, and he said, hey, we just want to let you know we're shooting the movie in, in a month or something like that. He said, oh, well, that's fantastic. Um when can I audition? And he's like, no, 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 no need to audition. You already, you've already auditioned by calling me every day, every every uh, every month, month for yeah. six months. So that was my first film. It's a film that I don't even know where it came out. Um, it was on Blockbuster, I think, at the time. Okay. But that was my first, my first job in a movie. Wow. And then my second job in a movie, which was really the the movie that. The movie that everything clicked for me was a movie called Suicide Blunt mm. that I shot in Miami, and I got it in a strange way as well. I gave an actor, a friend of mine, a ride to meet with the director. He knew the director. Wow. I was just giving him a ride because the guy didn't have a car. So wow. I gave him a ride, and I got down with him. I got off with him, 
And while I was there, I uh, I told the director I can audition for the movie. Wow. And I ended up booking one of the one of the I was ended up booking the fourth lead in the film. And that's the movie that brought me to LA. Believe that's it incredible. Or not. Wow. So so yeah, I mean again, just I think for any of the actors watching or any creative talent, you know, this idea of, you know, losing that self-consciousness, being persistent, you know, knocking down doors without being, you know, stalker, right? But really mm -hmm. having that that discipline to stay after something, you know, most guys, you know, they have one shot in a room with a director or producer, they forget about it, they're on to the next thing, but just kind of like that idea of touching base regularly with folks in the industry and, and then having that pay off is such, such an amazing note, you know, for anyone trying to enter this creative industry. So it's, that's, that's a brilliant, I mean, you're, you're really like, touching so many amazing points. Uh, we, have, we have to turn this into one of those master classes like Scorsese. <laughs> <laughs> I but, still uh, do that, by the way. I still do the same things I did when I first started out. That's awesome. I still that's reach out to people. I still stay in touch with people who I've worked with or people who I want to work with. Absolutely. You know, social media is a great thing. Social media is a great thing because now on Instagram, Facebook, you'll see direct, you see people who you couldn't be able to reach or people yeah. who are up and coming and, and you look at the, you look at, you know, a project that they did. Maybe not a lot of people saw it, but I'll see and I, I see, oh, this director is good. Right. And, you know, this project, maybe nobody saw this. I can tell he didn't have any money to do this, but look how good this movie is. Yeah. And I'll reach out to them and I'll say, hey, love your film or love the trailer or whatever. We'd love to work with you. That's amazing. Yeah, that's, that's, yep. that's, that's great. You know, the, the, the idea of networking, following up, you know, really just kind of knowing and like you said, so much easier now uh, with social media to just kind of, you know, ping someone, send them a DM, tweet, whatever, uh, that you can mm -hmm. kind of keep tabs of where everyone is. And, and like you said, the world is much smaller now, much more accessible because of social media and technology. So that's, that's fantastic. So, you know, this has been, I, I wish we could stay on an hour, but it's only a half hour show. So I really want to jump into the show you're on now. Um, okay. The, the have and have nots, because it is one of Tyler Perry's biggest shows to hit. You're one of the central characters. How how did that particular role come about? The same way all these other roles that I was talking to you about. I was at an event that I wasn't going to go to, and um, and a friend of mine introduced me to Ozzy Arreo. Ozzy wow. Arreo was a president of Tyler Perry Studios, Cuban American as well, um, who happened to be in L.A because they're in Atlanta. He happened to be LA promoting a Madea movie. So he introduced me to, to Ozzy, and, and I, I said to Ozzy, you know, we started talking. You know, obviously, we had things in common and stuff. Right. And I said, hey, I, I want to be in one of your shows. I just told him I want to be in one of your shows. And I, But I wasn't expecting him to say, okay, yeah. I said, can I send you my, my demo and resume and, you know, check out my work? And, you know, yeah. Past that, you know, if he, they don't like my work, you don't, don't keep hounding them and stuff if it's not there. I love, you know, can I send you my demo, Russell? And uh, he said, sure. So I sent them my demo and uh, he emailed me back and said, you know, great work. Uh, you know, I liked, I liked what you did. I'm going to pass it on to my assistant so they can give it to casting. If anything comes right up for you that you're right for, we'll call you in. Wow. And didn't hear anything for about a month. And then suddenly a month later, I got a call for to audition for Vinnie Malone, the role that I play, the uh, t head of the Italian mob. Ends up being the head of the Italian mob. Right. Um, so I, I'm like, okay. I usually don't audition for that type of role, Italian, you know, Italian mob. I'll, I'll, I'll audition for a Latino mobster or something, but not an right. Italian mob. Mobster, especially with all the actors that are, you know, good actors that can play that role. And uh, I went in and I auditioned, and next thing you know, I I, I booked a role. Wow, incredible! So I you went the Andy Garcia route. You're Cuban, and then got the big shot playing an Italian. <laughs> which is what everybody always told me. Hey, you should play an Italian. You should play. Which I have played an Italian. I have played an Italian. I had done this movie in Miami, The Versace Murder, with Franco right. Nero and Steve Power, and I played Italian. There you the go. But I don't play an Italian American like from New York, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, and everybody yeah. should tell me, hey, you should be in the Sopranos. You should be in the, you know, whenever something Italian will come, you should be in the. I'm like, yeah, I should be, but. Well, well now and you are. Finally, <laughs> now I am. I'm the. I'm right now on the on the show. I'm right after that scene that you you showed. Mm -hmm. I become the head of the Italian mob. 
Wow. So you're a made guy now. I'm the godfather. <laughs> you're the father. I was a made guy. At that point, I was a made guy, but now I'm 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 running the whole the whole wow. show. So you are the Corleone. You're Michael Corleone now. I am Michael Corleone now. Yeah, I'm the son who becomes literally I'm the son who becomes the head of the mafia. But um the head of the mafia was my mom. So it's kind of like the godmother of the Madrina. Oh yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So now now that scene makes total sense. So you were also trying to get your boss out of prison. <laughs> totally. And and the way I played it, the way I played that scene is like finding your truth in there. Absolutely. It's a crazy scene shooting a guy in a cop. I, I, I got to say, I did not see that coming. I did, and especially like you're kind of in the cop, the precinct, and all of a sudden you just whacked the guy out of nowhere. That was that was shocking. No, no, no. It's crazy. And Tyler will do stuff like that that will like throw you off completely. You go, wow. wow. And I read it. I'm like, how am I going to get away with this? Honestly, how am I going to get away with this? Sure. Um, and it turns out that, you know, half the precinct is in my payroll. Like including the, a cop that comes in, the first one to come in, um, he's on the payroll and he's he's afraid for his life, literally. I'm sure, yeah. yeah and yeah. but the way I played the scene, the way I played the scene was that I was convinced, and it's finding the truth in the scene. I was convinced if I didn't get my mom out of prison, they were gonna kill her that night. She wasn't gonna make it out alive. So if you do that, you do anything for your mom. Absolutely, yeah. Anybody. So it's, Anybody, yeah. if you think your loved one's in there behind that wall and they're going to kill them and this is a hit and she's been set up, you will do anything. And that's how I, that's how I had to justify it because it's so crazy. <laughs> Am I crazy pulling out a gun? And, but I was so frustrated with the guy and I realized I wasn't – my objective in the scene was not – I was not going to get it unless I did something dramatic. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's called the – I guess they call it raising the stakes, right? <laughs> I raise, yeah, raising the stakes, yeah. Like that was like to the upteenth level, but oh, it was a brilliant scene. It gave me chills. It makes me want to watch the series now. It is on the OWN Network, correct? OWN Network. It's Tuesdays at 8 p.m. and 7 Central Time. Awesome. So all you all you viewers out there, if you want to see more of Vinnie Malone and Oscar Torrey, tune into the haves and have-nots on the OWN Network Tuesday nights. It's really a cool, powerful show. I love mob drama movies uh, and TV shows. That's a great genre. And and again, Oscar, I wish we had more time. We're going to have you back for a part two, just like The Godfather. There's got to be a part two. Um, and just continue this, this conversation, my friend. But I just want to thank you so much for your time. I'm going to put you on standby one second, and then we'll sign off so I can say goodbye to the folks. But thank you so much for joining us today, Oscar. My pleasure, Jose. Awesome. Hang on one second. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was the one and only Oscar Tori, a good friend, an amazing local actor doing big things in L.A., big things on television, big things with Tyler Perry all around. Just a great guy, a phenomenally talented actor. Make sure you follow him on Instagram and Facebook for all the latest on what Oscar is up to. And as always, I am your host, J.L. Martinez. And until the next time, as I always say, Happy streaming.